God wants his house to be filled. And he isn't wanting to just have the best, the most fashionable, the brightest people coming in. I mean, they're welcome, of course. He'd love to have them in. But if they don't get involved, don't be too surprised. And it's highly likely that you know some people, people who belong in those seats and who are waiting to be invited, waiting to be urged to come in. Welcome to the Worship Center in Grimes Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. Thanks for joining me. I want to talk to you about a story that Jesus told about us inviting people into the kingdom of God and how that dynamic works. See, one time Jesus was invited to a banquet and all the community leaders were there. All the rich people, all the influential people, all the powerful people were there. And during the course of the meal, Jesus began to talk to those people who had invited him to the banquet. And he says there in Luke's gospel, chapter 14, beginning in verse 12, and I'll summarize a little bit first. He says, when you have a banquet or a party, don't invite your friends, nor your relatives, nor the rich and powerful people in the community. Because he said, if you do, they might invite you to their next party or banquet, and you will have been paid back. He says in verse 13, though, but when you have a party, invite the poor, the injured, the lame, and the blind, verse 14, and then you'll be blessed because they cannot pay you back, and you will be paid back at the resurrection of the righteous people. That's pretty interesting. Jesus is talking about the natural tendencies that we all have, that tendency to hang around with the people we already hang around with, to associate with the people that we already associate with. You know, we do that because it's easier. We already know them. It's more fun. We can relax. And not only that, there's usually a little bit of reciprocation, meaning, you know, if we have them over to our place a few times, we can expect them to invite us to their place a few times. It's only polite and it's only fair. But then Jesus wants us to reach out beyond our comfort zone by faith. So he tells these people a story. Here's what he says there, beginning in verse 16. Jesus said to his host, A certain man made a great supper and invited many people. Verse 17. And he sent his servant or his employee, his assistant, at supper time to say to those that were invited, Come, for all things are ready now. Verse 18. And they all began with one consent to begin to make excuses. The first said to him, Hey, I bought a piece of land and I need to go inspect it. Please have me excused. Verse 19. And another one said, Oh, I bought five yoke of oxen. I need to go test them. Please have me excused. Verse 20. And another one said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Notice that all these people who were invited were well acquainted with the man who was having the feast. They all knew him. You know, the guy was throwing this party. They all liked him. They were all supportive of him. They all cared about him. You know, they were his inner circle of friends. They were the people that he hung around with, and they all visited back and forth. The problem wasn't that they didn't know him. The problem wasn't that they didn't like him. The problem was simply that they were busy with the blessings in their lives, and those good things crowded out their real blessings. You know, it's so easy to become too busy to put first things first. It's easy to allow the good things in our lives to get in the way of the best things God has for us in our lives. Verse 21 says, so that servant, that employee, that assistant came and showed his boss all these things. Then the man holding the feast got really mad and said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and bring in the poor, the injured, the crippled, and the blind. Verse 22, and the servant said, sir, I've done what you said, and yet there's still room for more people. Verse 23, and the man holding the feast said to the servant, okay, go out into the highways and hedges, compel them to come in, persuade them to come in strongly so that my house may be filled. So here Jesus is revealing the heart of God for reaching humanity. He is talking to those of us who believe. He's talking to Christians, people who already know him, people who already love him. And he's telling us to reach out to those who will come in if somebody invites them. But maybe they wouldn't come to God out of their own desire. You know, they're kind of on the fence about it. 
They're waiting for someone to lead them one way or another, to show up or not. And he says that we need to go to those who are outside and compel them, persuade them strongly to come in. Be clear, strongly urge them. Make it easy for them to show up. Make it a little harder for them to skip out. There were a lot of hungry people in that town, and there were a lot of full ones, a lot of people who were wealthy and full and very busy. And clearly, the full ones could not make time for the feast that the rich man had thrown. You know, and there are people all around us, around you and me, who are full on the things of this world and who seem to have no time, no interest, and no hunger for the Lord. And we can invite them, and they might come, they might show up, but don't be surprised if they have too much going on to ever actually come in or show up. And then the story that Jesus told here, we can learn a few things about God. First of all, that God wants his house to be filled. And he isn't wanting to just have the best, the most fashionable, the most cutting edge, and the brightest people coming in. I mean, they're welcome, of course. He'd love to have them in. But if they don't get involved, don't be too surprised. You know, God then looks down and he sees an empty building there, you know, empty seats around his table. And, you know, he has people who belong in those seats, but they just don't know it yet. And it's highly likely that you know some people, people who belong in those seats and who are waiting to be invited, waiting to be urged to come in. Another thing we can learn is that God isn't the one who's going to fill his house. You know, a lot of people imagine that they should come in and start feasting from the Lord's table, and he should be out there in the streets bringing people in. But he makes it our business to fill his house. He tells us to go talk to people, reach out to people, for us to offer an invitation to people. He wants our classes filled. He wants our seats filled. He wants our services filled. He wants our concerts filled if we have them. He wants our parking lot filled. He wants his house filled. He wants his house filled. And like the house in the story, it's the same today. His house won't get filled on its own. It can sit there in plain sight with a sign out front, and everyone in town can know where it is, but that won't fill it up. He sends his servants out to find the people, to speak to them, to invite them, and to fill up his house. Listen, we need to reach out to the people that we know. We need to talk to them. We need to invite them. You know, his assistant wasn't sent out to feed people. They weren't sent out with uh, plates full of food or to-go containers. That servant was sent out to invite them to the place where they could be fed, well-fed, and taken care of. You know, and Jesus says, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the injured, the crippled, the handicapped, and the blind. You know, it interests me that Jesus says, go out quickly, go out quickly. He didn't say, go take some courses on how to give a good invitation. You know, he didn't say, go take a class in evangelism and soul winning and then go out and try it a little bit. He tells us to reach the ones who are poor, the ones who are empty, the ones who are coming up short. And he says... Go out into the highways, bring in the busy ones, bring in the business people, and into the hedges, you know, there along the side of the road, bring in those who are resting and in their leisure time, you know, and compel them to come in too. Jesus describes these people as first the poor, not just those who don't have much money or who don't manage their money well. People without the Lord are poor spiritually, needing the opportunity to know him. He sends us to those who are poor in their situation, poor in their circumstances. You know, some people have money and good jobs and nice homes, but they're poor in their attitude and in their hearts and in their self-image and in their thinking. They're poor spiritually. Jesus said that one sign of the Spirit of the Lord being upon someone is that what? The poor have the gospel preached to them. And we need to reach those who may be rich in the things of this world, may be rich in possessions, but who are poor spiritually. You know, and they might have the best this world has to offer, but they're empty and they have no faith and no joy, no meaning and no hope. Jesus says, I've got something just for you. You know, these are people that we know, people we work with, people we go to school with and we see at the store, they're our neighbors. Then he sends us to the injured, those who have been hurt in life. You know, we're surrounded by people who are hurting and limping through their lives. Some have been abused. Some were taunted as children or teenagers. You know, think of the people who have gone through a painful divorce or a relationship breaking up, and they're really hurting. You know, for some, it 
was a business partner or maybe a boss who's taken advantage of them. Then there are the parents, you know, who's had their hearts broken by their children going astray. People need God's help and he offers it to them through us. You know, many people feel injured, permanently injured by life, and we need to bring them the good news that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus has a new life and a new hope for them. He has forgiveness and a new future. And he says for us to go quickly and tell them so they're not suffering so long. Now, is there anyone we're not sent to? God says, go into the highways and the hedges. Go to that wealthy person, that popular person, that one that seems to have it all going on and spark their hope and their dream and let them know that Jesus can meet that need that they still have. Go to the ones in the hedges, those who aren't complaining, but they're just kind of hiding out, chilling out, no vision, not going anywhere, just living a gray, drab existence. You know, Many are just kicking back, not seeing that their days are slipping by and will end up at the end of their lives lost without God, without hope in this world and facing an eternity without the Lord. And Jesus says, go to them, speak to them, make some time for them. Now, how are we to bring this gospel to them? In a compelling way. That's why he's told us to do nothing here that's not in the spirit of excellence, that isn't sincere. It's not from the heart. Don't do anything like that. You know, it doesn't bring glory for God to throw something together at the last minute and lay it before the people half-heartedly. That's not compelling. Like Joshua and Caleb, we need to go first and find them, and then we can know how to compel them, how to spark their motivation. Now, one thing we do at our church is food distribution. We have a food bank. We feed hundreds of people through that food ministry, and, and we feed them through other food banks and ministries that we donate to so we can give food out to those in need. We have volunteers that come in every week to pick up the food and sort it out and organize it, and then others who come in to hand it out to the people who come in for food, and they're just needing help for that. But the poor and the hungry and the needy are just one of the groups of people in our community. There are wealthy people here as well. There are middle class people. And they might not come in for the food bank. You know, they may not pick up for one of the other food banks. It's not their need. It's not their interest. It's not their want. It's not their heart. But God says, compel them to come in. God wants everyone to know him. He says that he has no pleasure when a person dies who doesn't know the Lord. He wants everyone to know him. Jesus said that he would never turn away anyone who comes to him. You know, if the average believer will take their proper place in the kingdom of God, anointed with the Holy Spirit, then we can speak boldly, confidently, and with all authority and start compelling them to come in. Our lives will shine bright enough that they will want for themselves what they see that we have in the Lord. You know, you can approach them based on their situation and tell how the Lord can change all that. You can tell from your own heart, your own life stories, what you've learned from the Lord, what you've received from the Lord, how he's helped you. You can share your own testimony, how you used to be and how you are now, what he's done for you there, how he's blessed you, how he's taken care of you, how he's met all your needs and then some, how he's prospered the works of your hands, how he's given you some of the best people in the world to associate with and learn from and pray for you. You can tell all that. You know, you can tell them that they will never regret coming to the Lord and that how you have never regretted it, not even for a minute. Tell them how you have no desire at all to go back to the way you used to be when you didn't know him. You know, tell how you came out of sin and addiction and pain or drunkenness, emptiness, and you've entered into the abundant, abundant life in Jesus that no religion can give and nothing in this world can give it like Jesus can. And you can rejoice that even in the trials of life, you're never alone, never without the counsel and comfort of the Holy Spirit and wisdom from God's own word. You know, God has great blessings for the people that he's sending us to. You know, have they created a happy life without him? God says in Isaiah, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which doesn't even satisfy you? Listen diligently, to me, God says, listen diligently to me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. God wants to bring blessings into people's lives. That's why it's called the gospel. That word gospel literally means good news. So how do we get them to come in? 
We go to them and we bring them in. We invite them. We call them. We email them. We text them. We share these videos with them. We drop by the old-fashioned way. Drop by and visit them face-to-face. -face. That's still a thing. We need to pray them in. and We need to go out and lead them in. Life without the Lord is empty and hard at best. But worse than life without the Lord is death without the Lord. I mean, how many people are dying alone on their deathbeds without the Lord every day? And I know that there are some, maybe you, there are some that watch these videos or they might attend our services or services somewhere else, but you might not have given yourself 100% to the Lord and you're not experiencing that full abundant life that he promised you. You're not walking in that close, intimate presence with him that's available to all who will make that commitment to Jesus, that will ask him to be their Lord. Maybe you're not prospering in what you put your hand to and it's just not working out. You need Jesus in your life. God has a much better life for you than the one you're living now. Much better. A life of joy, of fullness, a life of peace, a life of blessing, a life of good things happening in your life. You know, God will never, ever disappoint you when you're coming to him for peace. You know, you won't be able to go forward and grow in God if you haven't been faithful in even that which is least. You know, when you get in, in the things of God, you become a doer of the word and you get with his people. There's just nothing better than that. And there's some learning involved. There's some growing involved. There's giving financially that's involved. There's serving that's involved. There's reaching out. There's getting out of your comfort zone. But I can tell you, ask anyone who's doing those things, is it worth it? And they'll tell you more than you could ever imagine. You know, I would never go back, even an iota, in the commitment that I made to the Lord all those years ago. I don't even regret one minute of serving him. He's blessed my life. He's blessed my home. He's blessed my health. He's blessed my marriage. He's blessed my children. He's just been such a good God to me. You know, why would I ever want to go back on that? I couldn't even imagine wanting to go, go back on that. And the Holy Spirit wants to fill you and lead you and guide you. And he wants to pour out a quality of life into you that worldly people can only dream about. And I know I've brought you these gospel truths faithfully today and that I've brought them clearly and succinctly. And I ask the Lord to honor his own promise that it will not return to him void. And it won't return to him void. He's the one that does the compelling. And I want to pray for you. And the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you to bring you closer to him than you've ever been before if you'll let him. And the Holy Spirit will move in you, inspire you to make the plunge, to stop holding back, to throw yourself completely into the things of God so he can begin to turn his blessings loose in your life. And your life will never be the same. I thank you so much for spending this time with me. And I do want you to know that I pray for you. We pray, our prayer group prays for all our worship center video viewers, our online worship center family. We value your prayers to us. We totally appreciate you. And I just want to ask you, as I always do, please remember to pray for me. I always need it and I totally value it. Thanks. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org, or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening, and God bless you and your family.